Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You want to bring your attention here as we begin today's service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. These are just showers of blessings and you want us together to bless the name of God. Bless the name of the Lord. Even for the weather and for what he's about to do tonight. Are you excited tonight to be part of what God is going to do tonight? Hallelujah. Even as we, we, we wait for our other brothers and sisters, I want you to bring your attention here as we begin tonight's service. Who is like unto thee? Oh, oh Lord, who is like unto thee? Oh,
gathered in the Lord, I want you to bring your mind here. Even as we lift the name of God together. Amen, 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 amen. Oh, blessing, seven glory and glory with all thanksgiving. Let's 
shall be greater than that of the former. Tonight, God is going to do something awesome, something great in your life that is going to change your life for the better. Something new, Imara. Something new, Imara. If we 
Lord of Lords. And his name is what? His name is what? And the Bible says that, oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Hallelujah. Shall we say together, oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name. Hallelujah. When I consider all the things the Lord has done, when I look around and I see the handiworks of our King, I can't help but to worship Him because He's the Lord of all creation. Hallelujah. Can I hear somebody shouting? Is that He's the Lord of all creation? He's the Lord of all creation. And we heard last night somebody is going to receive life. Amen. Creation is going to take place in this place. Hallelujah. Oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Can somebody begin to lift up the name of the Lord? Bless the name of the King of all kings. Magnify his name for he is worthy. There is no name on this earth that, can, that has been given unto men by which men might be saved. By the name of Jesus Christ. The name that when mentioned demons tremble. The name that when mentioned cripples walk. The name that when mentioned the angels bow before the king and they worship him. The Bible says that John turned to look at him. And when he turned, he couldn't, he couldn't, he could not behold the beauty and the awesomeness of our king. I want somebody to see this God, to see this king of all kings. And to bless the name of the Lord. He is worthy. The king is worthy to receive all power. He is worthy to receive all glory. Lift up your voice and bless the name of the Lord. Lift up your voice and magnify his name. Lift up your voice and magnify his name. For he is holy. For he is righteous. For he is wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 He is worthy. Oh, come on. Continue to bless the name. Oh, uh, just, just in your son and just bless the name of the Lord. I want everything to remain silent and the people worship the king. Lift up your voice, continue to bless the name. For he is holy. Bless the name of the Lord. You don't have to always sing to magnify the king. Let the Lord hear your voice. As you lift up his name on high. As you bless the name of the Lord. He is glorious. He is wonderful. We honor you, Lord. Oh, Lord, my God. When I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hands have made. I see the stars and I hear Thy path through all this universe, this place, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, and how great thou art, how great thou art. That sinks my soul. My Savior God to thee. And how great. How great. And then sing.
Magnify the name of the Lord. For he is worthy. For he is worthy. Holy Lord God Almighty. Oh, the earth is full of your glory. And the heavens declare your greatness. Oh, majestic God. Day unto day they pour forth speech. And night unto night they pour forth knowledge. Mighty God in every, in every language, in every tribe, in every tongue. Mighty God, I bless your name for all the things that you do. We give you glory, mighty God. We give you honor, King of all kings. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy. Magnify the name of the Lord. Continue to bless his name. 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 For he is word, for he is word, for he is word, for he is word, for he is glorious. Wisdom and power.
and he went on the cross for somebody who is coming to know the Lord today and because of that he is glorified he's been given a name that is above all names and the Bible says that at the mention of the name of Jesus every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that he is God to the glory of the King of all kings to the glory of the majesty to the glory of a God who reigns forevermore bless the name he is worthy he is glorious hallelujah he is worthy he is worthy he is worthy
all things were made. I get so excited when I hear that. For by him, all things were made. Things in heaven and things on earth. Whether they are thrones or rulers or powers or authorities. All things were made by him. Turn to somebody and tell them that all things were made by him. And for him, and he is before all things. And in him, all things hold together. Today in him, something new is going to happen to you. You are going to receive life and receive it in abundance in the name of Jesus. We thank God for what he's done. For since uh, Thursday night, great, great things have happened. Many miracles have taken place. Souls have been saved. Today there was uh, this extraordinary service, the morning service, and amazing things have happened. And today, as we uh, come to the final, the climax, we know that God is going to do something extraordinary for the glory of his mighty name. And so get yourselves ready and look, expect something extraordinary happen to you. Happen to you. Happen to you as an individual. In the name of Jesus. Amen. On this note, we want to call upon our sister, Nana Dansua. Are you here somewhere? She's come to give a, a very brief testimony of what our Lord Jesus Christ has done in her life. Let's put our hands together for the king. And then after that, we proceed. Hallelujah. Indeed, our Jesus is the great God of wonders. And therefore, all hallowed be unto his holy name. Amen. I was once dead. I didn't hear you. I died. About a year ago or a year and a half ago, I was dead. But this is how it started. I had a dream and I saw three graves in front of me. I was walking towards the graves and I saw a mighty woman of God. On the other side of the grave, he stopped me and said, no, no, don't come. I said, mommy, I want to come to you. She said, don't come. I will come to you. Wherever you are, wherever I am, just pray with me. So we prayed. And she said, the lady who is in the grave is called Regina. So we prayed for Regina. When I woke up, I did three days fasting. Praying for all the Reginas I know in this world. Not knowing it was myself. Hallelujah. Great God of wonders, hallowed be unto your holy name. Three days later, after a prayer meeting, Monday clinic, I walk out of, from the auditorium and that was it. I couldn't see anything. I, I didn't know where I was. I was totally gone. A passerby stood and as they were trying to resuscitate me, she said, what are you doing? The woman is dead. Can't you see she's gone all black? Just leave her. Call the paramedics. Let them come and take the body away. And another mighty woman of God was passing. She started screaming. Calling the name of Jesus. Calling the name of Jesus. Who gives life. And life abundantly. She ran to the auditorium. And called the leaders of the church. Apostle came over. I think I was so lucky. There were visiting pastors around. Apparently, they surrounded my dead body and they called unto the Lord Most High. And behold, I came back to life. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. But on the journey when I was gone, I found myself on a very silver pallet, very big pallet. Its speed is indescribable. I cannot compare the speed of that pallet or that transport with even the aircraft. And it was speeding. It went to a very beautiful gate and it stopped. And when it stopped, the gate got opened. 
and I could see white robes. I didn't see faces. Lots of them coming towards the pallet. And those who transported me to the gate were also there. All I could hear was discussion among the two groups. And after a while, all I could see that the pallet has turned back. Hallelujah! I could feel the pallet was reversing back. And as it reversed back, for a while, I felt the heat of this world. Oh my God, this was so hot. But where I was going, it was air conditioned. So beautiful as Garden of Eden. But then I was brought back. Why? Because the mighty men stood around me and they called the name of Jesus. When I woke, I had a split lips. My lips were split into two. Blood was gushing. My jacket was all soaked with blood. I was taken to a hospital in Romford. And by my bed, I could vividly see Mama Otu, Mama Crunchy, Pastor Crunchy, and, and Pastor Otu around my bed. And Mommy was trying to feed me with a straw. But then the porridge was filled with blood. And they encouraged me to take something because I need something to eat. At that point, there were three medical officers surrounding my bed trying to make a decision whether they are going to operate the lips, whatever they were going to do. I don't know, but Jesus knew. So, two of the consultants decided to operate it. And they said, no, we will need to seek a third opinion. So they went and called the, the, the senior to them, and he came. The man looked at me from the, on the bed. From top to bottom, he shook his head. I was praying. I had my daddies and my mommies around me, and I knew within their hearts they were also praying for me. We prayed and the operation was canceled. The consultant turned around and said to me, beautiful, I don't think I'm going to do the operation for you. I believe this will heal. So I will keep you under observation, and if all goes well, we will discharge you, and then you will revisit. If there are any complications, don't hesitate. Call, and we shall give you help. Call your GP. We are sending a letter to your GP, and he will do a follow-up. My dear brothers and sisters, my GP visited me at home. They were doing follow-ups as they were supposed to be doing. I could not walk. I could not talk. I could not eat. But today, here I am, so beautiful, so uniquely made, all because of the name of Jesus. The mighty one of Israel, the I am that I am, the above all else, who is able and abundantly able to do beyond what we seek, to do beyond human understanding. He was with me and he is with me till now. He has uniquely created me and his purpose will stand for my life because my Bible tells me I shall not die, but I will live and declare the goodness of the Lord in the name of Jesus. May his holy name be praised. He is with us. All those who are listening to this testimony out there, whatever you are going through, I testify the name of Jesus to you now. Whatever it is, whatever the problems, he says, bring all your burdens unto me, cast it unto me, and I will give you rest. He is able. He raised the dead from the grave. He did it to Lazarus, and he said to Talita, Kumi, Talita, Kumi, Talita, Kumi, whatever your problem is. God is able to do that for you. May his holy name be praised. Amen. Oh, let's do better. Let's do better. In the name of Jesus, I shall live. Say it to yourself. In the name of Jesus, 
I shall live to see his glory. Amen. We are going to call on uh, uh, Sister Pat on Thursday night. She gave a, a, a testimony of um, a transformation, the way the Lord transformed her life. And uh, she's here. We want her to repeat the testimony, give us a summary of the testimony very briefly uh, before we proceed. Mama Pat. Praise the Lord. I won't go through it all again because you say it was boring because you heard it on Thursday. However, the enemy tried to take the mic from me because when I stand in the name of Jesus, he shakes with all his demons. He shakes and I'm happy about that. So I'm here again just to summarize what the Lord has done for me. So in a nutshell, where I was eight years ago and before in the world, drinking with a can in my hand every blessed day, four cans a day. Couldn't wait even to put it in a glass because that would have been a waste of drinking time for me. But the glory of God came upon me in 2001 when I went to the seaside with the Church of Pentecost. And I gave my life to Jesus that day. And I have never looked back, never looked back. The Lord has redeemed me, the Lord has saved me, the Lord has delivered me. If I have a drink, the drink doesn't have me. There's a difference. So you out there with addictions, and I don't just mean drugs, sex, rock and roll, and alcohol. I mean working too hard, running after money in this credit crunch, not putting your trust in Jesus. That's an addiction. So I want to just encourage everybody here that once you have Jesus, you have everything. Amen? There's power in the name of Jesus. Amen. There's healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. Amen. He's a prayer answering God. Call upon him in times of trouble. He's our very present help in all times of trouble. So I just want to encourage you tonight. I won't waste much time. I've summarized where I was in the world, drinking every day, where I am now to the glory of God, dancing for the King of Kings, singing to the King of Kings, loving the King of Kings and working for the King of Kings. Prioritize yourselves, brethren. Don't store your treasures up down here because we are going to an eternal place. We are just sojourners. We are passing through this land. So don't make yourselves too comfortable here because you will leave everything. Naked you came and naked you will go. So put your priority. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Hallelujah. God bless you. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. We're going to call on the mass square. London Metropolis Lap Mass Choir to come and minister song unto us unto the Lord and then after that go into the ministry of the word Hallelujah somebody if you are here with me please give a wave offering unto the Lord give a wave offering unto the Lord tonight we want to minister unto the Lord and unto our hearers out there, that Jesus is the only name given unto us in heaven and on this earth and under the earth through which we might have salvation. So we want to sing salvation. Hallelujah. Deliverance in his name. Oh, my 
in any other name except the name of Jesus.
Why don't we join them and say thank you, Jesus? And we thank God for such inspired administration, such a wonderful choir and the musicians. If, I, if we can bless them, bless them with a, with a, a clap of honor unto the Lord. Let's just bless them with a clap of honor unto the Lord. Such a wonderful, wonderful choir and the music team. God bless you so much. Just now, we want to um, hand over everything to our host, uh, Minister, the person of our resident missionary, Apostle M.S. Apia, is the host minister, and it's uh, by his vision that this crusade was birthed, and we give glory to God for his life. And so on this note, well, why don't we just welcome Apostle M.S. Apia to the podium as he takes us forward. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord in the name of Jesus. It's so amazing, but such a wonderful name has been given to us. The only name that saves. The other time by the pool of betters that when cripples and the blind and other people were waiting for only one angel to come so that they will be healed. Somebody encountered the master himself and he went scot-free. We give glory to the name of Jesus for all that has transpired since three days ago. And we believe that tonight he still has something to do. We thank God for the life of our dear evangelist Amos and what God has used him to do. And tonight, by his unfailing grace, he has another vessel well prepared and equipped. God has many vessels. He has prepared his servant, Reverend Mike Harris of Ignite Ministries, who is an international evangelist and without much ado i invite reverend mike harris to the podium right bless you bless you hallelujah amen hallelujah god is good all the time it's a real privilege and it's a real honor to be here to tonight, I honour you, and I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to actually do what I love doing. There is nothing greater than sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, who was dead and now is alive. Who was dead and now is alive. Who was dead and now is alive. Now is alive. Amen. I could go home now. We've done it. He is dead. Now he is alive. And tonight, I just want to say that your life will never be the same. Because Jesus is here. Because Jesus is here. I want to tell you what's going to happen over the next half an hour, hour or so. There's going to be a powerful message because Jesus has the power that you're going to be introduced to, to the man who loves you unconditionally. His name is Jesus. People are going to be healed tonight. Miracles are going to happen here tonight. Lives are going to get transformed here tonight. I want you to tell you that Jesus is alive. This is so much like home. I've spent so long and at different times working around Africa. And the only thing which is different is that I can understand the language which is being taught without an interpreter. And the PA isn't distorted. Hallelujah. That's a great. And the platform is secure. Hallelujah. I have got scars where I've fallen through platforms where it's been serious stuff. But, hallelujah! Amen! 
James is Jimmy. This morning was awesome. You you laid the ground for t tonight because you encouraged us to say that God wants to work through every single one of us. And tonight, what I'm going to do things a bit differently tonight. How many of you believe that Jesus' name is above every other name? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. How many of you believe that you have the name of Jesus? Maybe not so many of you. That you have the name of Jesus. That is at the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. To give God the glory and the honour. Tonight, at the end, I'm going to pray for those who have got incurable diseases, AIDS, cancer, those who are terminally ill. God is going to meet you where you're at. And I'm going to pray for those women or couples who are barren and you cannot have children. God's really spoken that and laid that on my heart this morning. But right now, right at the beginning, do not... I spend a lot of my time. Let me, let me just give you a brief history. Four years ago, well, a very brief, I, I got saved ages ago. God, God impacted my life. I love Jesus. And then four years ago, I had a vision of Jesus. And he laid his hands on me for a healing anointing. And he said, Mike, I want you to reopen the wells for the miraculous in this nation and around the world. That, and since then, that's changed my whole life and my whole ministry. So, so tonight, I want to give you the opportunity to actually pray for the sick and see them healed right at the beginning. Even under the umbrellas, God can work under umbrellas. God can work in the choir. Hallelujah. God can work on the platform. So it doesn't matter who you are or where you've been or what you've done. It doesn't matter your condition right now because Jesus is here. And he's going to work through every single one of you right now. So if you're sick in your body, I just want you to just raise your hand. Okay? I won't be able to see you, but those around you will. So just raise your hand if, if you're sick. Okay? There's, there's a few. Great. Hallelujah. Okay? Now keep your hands raised. This is putting into practice what <laughs> Evangelist Jimmy taught us this morning. So if you've got your hands raised, your friends around you can see your hands raised. I want you to put your hands on that person right now. You are going to minister healing right now. So if you're, if you're sick, keep your hands in the air. Those of you who haven't got your hands raised, I want you to go and put your hands on somebody who's got their hands raised right now. Come on, let's move! In the name of Jesus. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to every sickness and every disease. I curse it right now. And I command it to be gone. In the name of Jesus. Blood disorders. I say be healed in Jesus name. I speak a creative miracle. I, I speak new pancreases into being. In the name of Jesus. Heart conditions be healed. Cancer be healed. HIV AIDS be healed. Arthritis. I curse you. I command you to go. I say be healed. Be made whole. Sickness and disease. Be gone. Not in my name. But in the matchless name of Jesus. You have got to bow your knees sickness. And go. And I thank you Jesus. That I am healed. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want everybody to stand to their feet. Everybody stand to your feet. 
You might have to put down your umbrellas just for a couple of moments. I promise I won't be long, especially if it's raining, because I can't tell. It must be because your umbrella's wrong. <coughs> so I want everybody to put their arms straight out in front of them. I want everybody to put their arms to the side. I want everybody to do this. I want everybody to do that. I want everybody to do this. Everybody do this. I know time is very, very short. Okay, but right at the end, after we've made the appeal and people have come to know Jesus as the Lord and Savior, I want a queue of all those who've just been healed. And because we're just gonna do quick testimony after testimony after testimony of the power of Jesus. And even right now, I believe 100%. Healing is a process. Miracles are an event. Some of you have had a miracle right now, right now. Right now, but there'll be others of you. As the word is preached, as the word is preached, your healing will manifest itself. Keep in faith, keep believing, because I'm expecting mighty works because of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please be seated. son I know I don't look that old I'm 45 this year I've been in the ministry since 94 so it's been a few years and do you know what this is just awesome I love it tonight I wish it could go on wish it could go on we love so many different things the Bible says God is love there are three different types of love in the Bible there's a physical love, a sexual love, between a man and a wife. There's a friendship love between two friends. And there's a selfless kind of love, God's love. True love can only be found in God. Because God is love. God cannot overlook your mistakes. He cannot overlook your shortcomings. He cannot overlook your deliberate acts of rebellion, your selfish, independent nature, which the Bible calls sin. They must be punished. But I want to tell you today that God loves you. That God loves you. And he wants the best for your life. That's why he made a way for you and me to be restored and brought back into relationship with God Almighty, so that we may be able to be for forgiven. I want to tell you a true story. It happened in the American Revolution with George, George Washington. 
It was a few years ago. There was a Baptist pastor named Mike Peter Miller, who was a really good friend of George Washington. Where Peter lived, there also was a nasty man. His name was Michael Whitterman. He was an evil dude. He did terrible things. He persecuted that pastor 24-7. One day, Michael was arrested and charged with treason. He was sentenced to death. Peter, the pastor, traveled 70 miles on foot to plead his case before his friend, George Washington. And George said, Peter, I can't forgive your friend. My friend, said the pastor, he's my own enemy. He hates me. George Washington said, what? He's not your friend? He's your own enemy? That puts a different picture on the whole thing. Because of that, Michael, that criminal, was pardoned. And do you know what? They went home. Michael and Peter, good friends. I want to ask you a question. What would you do for your enemy? For that neighbour from hell? Oh, no, not that one. <laughs> that work colleague? Oh, no, not that one. If they needed you to save their life, would you walk 70 miles for them? Possibly not. Maybe never. But who would you die for? Would you die for your partner, for your wife, for your husband? Yes, there's a good chance. Would you die for your kids? Yes, there's a good chance. Would, would you give your life for a relative or a friend? Yes, there's a good chance. But for somebody who hated you, for somebody who cursed and despised you, do you know what the Bible says? That God put his love on the line for us by sending his son in sacrificial death, that while we were no use to him, while we were God's end enemies, Jesus died for us. Amen. Tonight, I want you to know that God is not blind to your suffering. That God is not blind to your suf suffering. To the pain that you are feeling, to the hurt that you are anguished by, to the guilt that consumes you, the Bible says that God catches every tear and places it in the bottle. He wants to turn your tears into laughter and into joy. The Bible says that God was in Christ bringing the world back to himself. It's like God was on this side and we were on that side. And in Christ, we've been reconciled. We've been brought together. The reason you are here tonight, in this weather, maybe for many, many different reasons. Maybe because a friend dragged you and you're kicking and screaming. No, I don't want to go, it's raining. Maybe you've come just to please your friend. Maybe there was nothing else to do than stay dry at home. The reason you are here tonight is for one reason only. Because the love of God is drawing you to himself. The love of God is drawing you to himself. I want you to know tonight that God loves you. God's love didn't begin at the cross. Because it was love that, created, that made God create man and woman in his own image, in his own likeness, and put him in a place called paradise. Now, when I've travelled around Africa, some of the sunsets, some of the things that I've seen have been totally mind-blowingly amazing. But can you imagine what paradise would have been like? Love was behind it all. Because God said, you can eat from any tree in the garden, except from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't eat from it. The moment you eat from that tree, you're dead. You're dead. It was love. God's love. That pointed out the danger spot. That warned Adam. That warned Eve. Don't eat from it or you'll die. 
It was love that made God seek out Adam, seek out Eve when they made that fatal mistake. When their eyes were opened and they saw that they were naked and they tried to sew leaves together to cover up their shame, to cover up their guilt, to try and hide themselves from God Almighty. And since that time, what do we do? What do you do to hide yourselves from Almighty God? We try and cover our failings, our hurts, and the rejections that we feel. So many of us work long hours so that we don't have time to feel alone. We cram our lives with so much stuff to try and steal that small, still voice. Let me tell you tonight that everybody in the sound of my voice, there's a hole inside every single one of you which only God can fill. Which only God can fill. From that fatal mistake, sickness, pain, and finally death entered the world. Because of that one simple act, mankind would be separated from God. Not just while they lived on this earth, but also into eternity, into the afterlife or the after death. Since that time, every single man, every single woman has been born with a bias, a leaning to do that which is wrong. That habit which leans to do no wrong. Now, many of you have had children or you've got children. You do not have to train them to be naughty. They do it automatically. It's that in-bane bias to do that which is wrong. I can remember walking along the park when I was younger, there was a sign, do not step on the grass. What did I do? Jump over the fence, run around the grass and jump back over him before anybody caught, caught me. Why? Because it said don't do it. There's a bias, there's a leaning inside every single one of us to do that which is wrong, which the Bible calls sin. It was love that made God let Moses produce the Ten Commandments which Jesus sums up in a very simple sentence. Love God with all that you have and love each other as you would like to be loved yourself. I don't know about you, but I've failed. Do I love my wife as much as I love myself? I try. Do I love my kids as much as I love myself? No, if I'm on honest. Do I try? Sometimes. <laughs> no, I do try. But it was love that enabled God to look down through the centuries, to look down through history, and he could see that you and I couldn't earn our place in heaven. There is nothing that we could do to earn that place in heaven. God's standard is perfection 100% all of the time. And I don't know about you, but I am not perfect. You just got to ask my wife that. Husbands, don't, wives, don't nudge your husbands too much. No. Because of that bias, we've been separated from God. Let me tell you that there is no purgatory. There is no second chance. It's appointed once for man to die. And then you'll face the consequences. Then you'll face God's judgment. And the Bible says this. Jesus is saying this to you tonight. Saving us all is his ideal. It's all of his work. All we do is trust him enough to let him do it. It's God's gift from start to finish. We don't play the major role. If we did, we'd probably go around bragging that we'd done it. No, we neither made nor saved ourselves. It's all gone. It's by grace tonight and grace alone. You cannot earn a place into heaven. Doesn't matter how good, how holy and how perfect you are from this moment to the moment you die. How about yesterday? Oh no, not yesterday. Couldn't you have said a few hours ago, but not yesterday. 
You know what you did yesterday. I know what I did yesterday. It was love. God's love. That sent a man to pay a price for our selfish, independent nature, for our sin, for the mistakes that we've made to bring us back into a relationship with God. God laid on Jesus the sins of us all. Can you imagine your hurt, your pain, your guilt, your selfishness was placed upon Jesus? There's about six, seven hundred people here. Your pain, your hurt, your guilt was placed upon Jesus. How about the couple of million people in London? It was all that pain, all that guilt, all that shame was placed upon Jesus. There are six billion people in the world. That's six with lots of noughts. Six billion people in the world. And can you imagine all that pain, all that hurt? All that guilt, all that selfishness was placed upon Jesus. But it wasn't just all of that. It was everybody who's ever lived, all of their pain. And it's everybody who will live from tomorrow. It's all of that guilt. No wonder the Bible says that Jesus' face was marred beyond recognition. It was love that enabled Jesus to become poor. So that we, through his poverty, might be able to become rich in Jesus' name. Jesus gave up his riches in heaven so that we may be able to give up our poverty on earth and become rich in heaven. It was love, divine love, that enabled Jesus to endure the cross. That Jesus was whipped 39 times. And that is, there was a, a, a bit of stick with 39, with his um, strands of leather, weaving in the wet leather was flint and some rock and some bits of metal. And as it went whipped onto Jesus, it caught the flesh and tore it off of his back. Two, three, four, 39 times. I've been told that there are basically 39 diseases in this world. There's millions of others, but there's 39 core ones as well. By his stripes, you are healed in the name of Jesus. Because of the cross, today, 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 you can be made whole physically, emotionally, relationally. And financially, it was love that enabled Jesus to pause in agonizing pain to the man next to him who cried out, forgive me. It's never too late. It's never too late to receive the love of God. It was love. That enabled him to cry out, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Could you say that? Could I say that? As my son Joshua was going to be killed. No, I couldn't. Let me tell you a true story. In Pittsburgh, in America, Pittsburgh is, is, is a city with a big lake, a big lake thing going into the city and there's a swing bridge over the mouth of the canal or over the, the lake which which the train goes across every morning and the people go safely into the city get on with the work then the bridge opens up again and the boats can go up and down every morning the phone rings the man up on the tower up in the top picks up the trains come he pulls the levers the cogs begin to turn the bridge begins to close and the train goes across safely. On this particular day, this is a true story. It's on a plaque just above the bridge. 
on this particular day, a man, no, they phoned, said the train is coming. But that morning, his 10-year-old son said, Daddy, can I come with you? Yes, son, come on, it'd be great. You can see the people waving at us as they, as they go past, and we wave down to them from the window. On that particular day, as the phone rang, he put his hands on the leaf, he looked out the window, and he saw his son climbing amongst the cogs. Climbing amongst, he shouted, he shouted, but his son was having too much fun. What does he do? Does he do nothing? And the train goes off the edge and three or four hundred people die. So it says this, with tears in his ears, his ears, his eyes, with tears in his eyes. He puts his hands on the lever and pulls the levers. The cogs turn. His son shouts. There's nothing he could do. That morning, everybody in the train waved up. He did not wave back. How much? That's just a short picture of how much Jesus has done for us. That he gave his life. That God the Father gave his son so that you may have life and have it more abundantly. But still today, many, many people misunderstand from Genesis to Revelation, man's greatest need, God's greatest gift, the love of God, can be summed up in 25 simple words. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes and puts his trust in him shall not die, but shall have everlasting life. Do you know, I want to challenge you. Do you know what? The world is a big place, six billion people. On a, have you ever, how do you read your Bible? Do you sometimes put your name in the text? Do you make it personal to you? This is a love letter from God to you. There are many times I read it and I put my name in the text. For God so loved Mike Harris that he sent Jesus to die so that when Mike believes and put his trust in Jesus, Mike shall not go to hell, but Mike shall have everlasting life in Jesus. Today, every single one of you, I want you to put your name in that verse. That God so loved you. Many people misunderstand God's love. God is love. His purity and his holiness demands that sin has got to be punished. But God's love provided a rescue plan for you and for me so that we could be made safe, so that we could be saved. God's love provided the cross of Jesus Christ. It was not the nails that held Christ to the cross within his feet, near the spear in his side, or on his hands. That wasn't what nailed Jesus to the, that held Jesus to the cross, but his love for you and his love for me. I want to tell you a true story. Oh, it's full of true stories tonight. A few years ago, I was in Africa. I was talking to a chief, and he was telling the story of a, a couple of months ago when this young man, who was quite a, he thought he was quite clever, and the chief was very wise, and everybody came to him as they seemed to do. And the boy thought, I'm, I'm going to trick the chief. I'm going to catch a butterfly, and if he's, and I'm going to ask the chief, is the butterfly dead or alive? If he says dead, I'll open my hands and let him go. If he says alive, I'll go <laughs> and squash him. So, so the boy said, Chief, is the butterfly dead or alive? And the chief smiled. He looked at the young man and said, young man, life or death is in your hands. <laughs> Life or death, it's in your hands. Tonight, 
something, one day, every single one of us will breathe our last breath. Death will come to us all. Where will you spend eternity? That's the question tonight. It's the only question tonight. The Bible says that heaven has got to enter into you before you can ever enter into heaven. That heaven has got to enter into you before you can ever enter into heaven. My purpose in writing is simply this, that you who believe in God's Son will know beyond the shadow of doubt that you have eternal life. The reality, not an illusion. Today you can have the reality of heaven right now. Do you know what? And I'm almost coming to a close. We've got plenty of time. No matter what you have done or who you've done it with, doesn't matter if you've lied or if you've cheated and we've done that. Let's just be honest. You don't have to put your hand up. Okay. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself tonight. Have you lied? Have you cheated? Have you drank too much or taken drugs? Have you beaten your wife or have you been beaten by your wife? That happens, that happens. Let me tell you, it happens. There's not many men will admit that though. There's not many men will admit that. Are you a thief or a murderer? Maybe a pimp or a prostitute? Tonight, it doesn't matter how black, dirty, shameful or terrible it may be, God loves you. And today, you may be at the very gates of hell themselves, where you think life cannot get any worse. I'm at the end of my tether. There's nothing else I can do. Still, God loves you. God is holy. He is holy. Our sin separates us from him. But God is also love. And there is a way back to God through the cross of Jesus Christ. God's love will reach you wherever you are. If you try and hide and go over to America or Australia, God's love will find you. If you try and climb to the highest mountain or go dive into the deepest parts of the sea, seven miles deep, God's love will find you. But tonight, you can still reject it and say no at your own cost. Tonight, you need to make a personal decision towards the love of God. Nobody can do it for you. It's not down to your parents. It's not down to reading your Bible, going to church. Tonight, it's down to you and you alone. Tonight, you can say no to the love of God and die without Christ. And in the end, end up in a place which nobody in their right mind would want to go to. Or tonight you can open your hearts and say yes to the love of God and receive him tonight. Can we all stand to our feet, please? About two years ago, I was in Tanzania doing something very, very similar to this. And there was a time where people began to come forward, which I'll ask you to do in a few moments. But there was a young man, and God spoke to my heart and said that there's a young man in the audience tonight, in the crowd tonight, who will not live to see tomorrow. His life was going to be now demanded of him. Now, I didn't know if he was going to get into trouble or if he was going to get into a fight or if he was just going to die. 
said, you know, with tears running down my face, I spoke those words out. And from across the side of the road, very slowly, a young man came to the front and gave his life to Jesus. Tonight, I want to ask you a very, very simple question. Do you know that love deep within your heart? Are you assured that if you were to die this moment, the Bible says, absent from the body, present with the Lord. If you're not sure tonight, I'd like you just to raise your hand and say, Mike, yeah, I want to receive the love of God for the first time. Just raise your hand right now. Those of you who want to receive the love of God afresh right, right now. Just raise your hand. All those who want to say, yes, Mike, I want to receive that love of God. Those of you who've got your hands raised, there's a few here. There's a couple over there. I want you to just come and make your way to the front right now. All of you who've got your hands raised right now, just come as you are. Just come and receive the love of God right now. Because I want to pray with you. Just come right now. Just come. Just come right now and receive the love of God. Doesn't matter how old you are. Doesn't matter if you're five, six or seven. Today, just come and receive the love of God. Just come right now. Just come right to the front. Just come. Just come right now and receive the love of God. Jesus. Just come. Doesn't matter how old you are. That's it. Just come, young man. Come. Doesn't matter how old you are. Hallelujah. Just come. God sent his son. Jesus. Jesus, just come. They call him Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Just come right now. Just come right now. Jesus. to Christ you've been doing the church stuff for many years but you've never made that true decision who is that person just come right now oh wait a few more moments I'm not going to rush this you may never have tomorrow you may never have tomorrow who is that just come right now just come who's that person just come. Say, Mike, I want to iron up. Just come right now. Just come. I'm just going to give just a couple more moments. Today is the day of salvation. Today is your day where you can be made whole. Jesus. 
Jesus. that God loves you. That he's got a plan and a purpose for your life. That today is the start of your day. It's great to see some young lives who haven't been messed up so much in this world. But I'd like you just to repeat, in fact, all of us, and then can say it out loud, okay? All of you can just repeat this after me, phrase by phrase. Father God, and especially you at the front, I want you to say it loud enough so you can hear it with your own ears, okay? So it's not a little whisper. You need to know that you know, okay? Say it loud enough so you can hear it with your own ears. Father God, I thank you that you sent Jesus to love me unconditionally. And I thank you, Jesus, that you died for me so that I can be forgiven, so I can know what it truly means to be loved and forgiven. So right now, I confess my sin and I ask you to forgive me. Come into my life and make me a new man. Make me a new woman. Can you say that if you're born again? In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Right now, just for a few moments, okay, there's some good friends of mine and they just want to give you a piece of paper and just pray with you and just talk with you just for a few seconds. Where's those counselors? Just, just, so if you want to just follow along the edge of here, please. Okay, it, I promise it'll only take a couple of moments. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Let's just have a praise, just... What was that hymn we sang earlier on? Was it a hymn we sang? Oh, no. No, not Amazing Grace. It's the other one. How great thou art. Yeah? That's a hymn, isn't it? Yeah, great. Let's just sing, sing that, okay? Because it is how great he is, okay? And then those of you who are terminally ill, those of you who have got an incurable disease, I want you to make your way to, to the front. And the pastors will begin to pray for you. Ready, pastors, yeah? For the fire of God. Okay? And then, those of you who've been healed at the beginning, who now knows that you're healed, I want you to make a line up here, and maybe there could be a couple of stewards to test out their healing. Yeah? Okay, so as we sing this song, let's go, okay, as it just begins to come. Just come.
this. Those couples who, who are infertile. Now, I want you to just, if you can come over this side, because I want to specifically just pray for you, okay? If your husbands are here as well, that's great, okay? And then we can just begin, pastors, if we can just begin to just minister, yes, just begin to pray. I just really sense, you know, that God's going to do a mighty work, okay? And then those of you who tested your healing, those of you who tested your healing, we can just come up in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Jesus is here. And he's working. Souls have given their lives. Now what we are on now is if you have any incurable disease or sickness, if you are sick, Jesus has given us the assurance to set you free before you leave here. And what pastor said was, if you have been healed since we started the program, you will stand by the left and when the time comes, maybe you will give a testimony. So now you will wait when the time comes. Maybe we'll take two or three people. But if you are somewhere there and you are sick, this is the time. This is the time. Don't wait to see any thunderstorm, lightning, grrr, before you believe. Jesus is here. And he's working by his spirit. And he has spoken about love, the love of God. Because he loves you, he will heal you. Do you believe this? Yes. Do you believe it? Yes. If you believe it, you will be healed even before a hand is laid on you. Because it is not the hand of man, but it is Jesus himself who does that. So if you haven't walked forward yet, you still have an opportunity. As many as can come. Maybe yours is not a physical ailment, but something you cannot tell anybody. God has spoken to me that tonight he will finish everything before we leave. Looking at what he has done from Thursday until now, he is still on business. The Spirit of God is present. And I would like to pray. And the pastors will lay hands. The love of Jesus is moving around. I can see him. He is working. He is the faithful one. He has never failed. He speaks. And it comes to pass. But God so loved you so much. But he has promised to do something significant. Even if it is cancer, it will disappear. By the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, I release healing to come where you are. Those who are in homes. Those who are watching. Who are behind the television. Who are in cars listening. The power of healing is penetrating. Something great is happening. Father, we stand before you. We have tried and tested you. And we know that you are able to do all things in the name of Jesus. The devil has taken many captives. And many people are being deceived. People 
people's monies are being taken from them and they suffer and suffer and suffer. But tonight, you are demonstrating your love once again because you loved us and you called us. What people are going through are not from you. I lift up my hand tonight and I pray the Lord you will lay your healing balm on your people. The balm from Gilead. You sicknesses, you ailments, you demonic powers, I come up against you right now in the name of Jesus. Run out! If there is anyone blind, I command you the spirit of blindness. Live right now in the name of Jesus. Is there any cripple around? May that person begin to walk in the name of Jesus. Throw away that stick. The Spirit of God is with you there. In the womb that is closed, may it be opened. 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 In the name of Jesus. Sula bakanda la basita. Shimpara basokombari. You have been declared to die. The Lord said, I should tell you, you will never die. You are not destined to die. The hand of the living God in the name of Jesus is upon you. Be healed. As the men of God are touching you. Something is happening to you. You might have somebody at home. The person is not here. You've been informed that that person's situation is critical. The Lord is working on that person wherever he is. Even if he is not in the country, he sent forth his word and healed them. Therefore, I send the word of God to go all places and begin to heal. Shandaraba Sokomba. Liparaba Wherever you are standing, lift up your hands. You need spiritual healing as well. Maybe you are not physically sick, but spiritually something is wrong. Things are not arguing well with you. But I remember Jesus giving power and authority to the disciples, telling them, but when you go, heal them, heal the sick. And when you go, cast out demons, cast out demons. Therefore, I stand here, not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God, by that unction. Let there be deliverance for God's people. Job opportunities, immigration problems, these are all troubles. I pray, may the Lord do something extraordinary in your life. So you will remember this crusade. You study and you haven't got a retentive memory. You spend all your nights opening the book, reading, reading, reading. By the time you get to the third sentence, the first two sentences are gone. I pray for the spirit of retentive memory for all students in the name of Jesus to come out with flying colors. There is no promotion since you started working. Tonight, let there be promotion. Open up, wherever you are. Very soon we are closing the crusade. The hour has come for the Lord to move. A certain wind is blowing. Cool wind is blowing. Blowing over your life. Blowing over your problems. Fresh. 
Sorobosota. Spirit divine. Take control. Take control. Take control. Take control. The elder should help. If you are an elder, the fire has touched your hands. Believe this. Touch them. You are an elder ordained. The power of the Holy Spirit is vested in you. Touch the people of God. Sulaba Sanda Labakandabati. Lupanda. You, that spirit, would give that lady sleepless nights, haunting her every night. This evening, I stop you from that activity in the name of Jesus. So from now, this lady will be able to sleep soundly. Jesus is passing this way. Is there a heart that is waiting? Jesus is passing. Jesus is passing. As you stand there, you check yourself and see. Check yourself, the sickness you brought. If you were not able to see, check and see if you can see now. Maybe you were half blind. Jesus is passing where you are. Sorrowful. That wonderful man is passing. The fathers are from 10,000. Lilies of the valley. Jesus is passing this way. Jesus is passing. Oh. After the 
prayer and the touch of the man of God. If you test yourself and you realize that something has gone out of you, the Lord has touched you in a way, we want you to come to the platform and testify as some have come. When you were coming, something was wrong. But you feel within you that the Lord has touched you. Come on right now. As we give the microphone to your brethren to testify. You feel healed. You believe that the Lord has touched you in a way. You are free to come to the platform. And oh man. Those ladies, those ladies who have been prayed for to actually you know for their wombs to be opened, for miscarriages to to stop. Right now, yet again, just put your hand on your stomach yourself, okay? Church, let's all just reach out our hands right now. There's just a group of ladies at the front here, okay? Let's just all just reach out our hands yet again. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we, I command the womb to be opened in Jesus' name. Father, I curse any generational curse in the, ne in the family line right now in Jesus' name. I command the pelvis to open in Jesus' name. I command the husband's sperm to become fertile and active in Jesus' name. I command the eggs to be fertile and speak life in Jesus' name. And Father, in nine months, in nine months, when she's in the right position, I command the oil of the Holy Spirit to lubricate the birth canal. And I command a simple birth, healthy and whole, in Jesus' name. Amen. And all I want you to do now is in 10 months' time, write to me. Amen. Hi. Just uh, name and what what was wrong and what's happening. Okay, when I came here about ten years ago, a sister took me to a church, not knowing that church was a society, a brotherhood society, and what I've passed through, only God knows. For about eight years, I got mental problems. Oh, yeah. for my, on my ears. Yeah. And all, all that I can say is I thank Jesus. Jesus, I, I know and I trust you since that time. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hi. Hello. What's your name? My name is Alfred Christmas. And then what's what's just happened? Um, on Thursday, I came and passed upon to pray for me, and I also had mental like, health problem. I'm in the mental hospital. I hear voices, and I was also feeling down. But after Pastor Pro uh, Pro I took, asked of my problem, and I told him, "Oh my, what's it? Pastor, what's again? You know, it's a problem, but you say um, you say challenge." Yeah, it's a uh, after I told him the challenge I was going through, he prayed for me, and from Thursday, I have uh, got changed and a miracle. Hallelujah! <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Um, I got the microphone. Yeah, yeah. I got time, mic. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, we've just made the PI guys a bit cross. Father, in the name of Jesus, fire, fire, Father. From this day forth, go forth in the power of the Spirit, and you will see God do awesome things. As he has touched you, 
God wants you to touch others in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give a clap of it to the Lord. You can do better than that. Clap for Jesus. I have three problems that I brought here. My marriage, my work, and my immigration problem. But as the God of men prayed for me, I feel an emptiness and I feel a heavy burden have been relieved of me. Amen. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, release us. Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, my name is Agnes Shikuno. About two years ago, I can't stand about two minutes or five minutes when I stand. My veins from top to down. Then I feel very pain so I can I, I sit down. But if, this morning when I came, when the man of God is uh, praying or touching, when I came forward, God touched me. Now I can stand about. Oh, praise God. Pray to keep, keep jumping. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Give a clap of it to Amen. Jesus. Praise Amen. God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. That's it. Whoops, and PA guys will tell when we're off. <laughs> Hallelujah! God is good! All the time! Tonight, lives have been transformed. There is rejoicing in heaven over not just one, but these last three days, 50 people have gave their hearts to Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah! In Jesus' name. Should we just go off with some worship? A couple of hours. I'll pass it over. Put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah! What we tell Pastor Harris, we did not hear you at all. Amen. Pastor, God bless you. God bless you. Beloved in the Lord, very soon we will leave this place for our various places of abode. We have done what is on the Lord's heart. Whenever we are in our various chapels, and places of worship and pray, 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 pray. The Lord gives us the unction for a purpose. If what is given is not utilized, then God stops supplying because he gives us the power to go and preach the gospel. In fact, a lot of things are going on these days and many people are being cheated and being deceived the real gospel is not being preached and if we keep quiet we keep silent the lord will deal with us now the unction has come what god is expecting and we also are expecting is that you don't wait for the pastor from now to plan or organize any rally or any campaign or any crusade. You have caught the fire. If you have caught the fire, lift up your hands and say, I have caught the fire in the name of Jesus. And all power and authority in heaven that has been given to Jesus has also been transferred to the church and Jesus says something in John's gospel chapter 14 and from verse 12 he says something I love he said that if people will not believe in me 
they should believe because of the miracles I do. And those who believe in me, the miracles I, Jesus, performed while on earth, they will perform more than that because I am going to the Father. And the verse 14 says, And if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And therefore, tonight, I challenge you that as you live, when you meet a blind person, remember that you have the name Jesus. Speak the word and the blind will begin to see. But the greatest miracle, the greatest miracle that ever happens and that has ever happened is for a soul to decide for Christ. And that is why the Bible says that when one soul, single soul, repents, every angel in heaven rejoices. So if the angels in heaven and God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit will rejoice over a single soul, then it means the soul is so precious to God who created. And that is why he gave Jesus to die. Church of Pentecost, United Kingdom, I want to assure you that the Lord has given the United Kingdom to us. I did not hear you at all. I said the Lord Jesus Christ has given the whole of the United Kingdom to the church of Pentecost. And this crusade will from time to time be held. And as we stand to propagate the good news, rulers of darkness will bow. And things that are crooked in our own lives and in the lives of individuals in the nation will be straightened because the name Jesus straightens crookedness. Amen. Amen. Elders and officers of the church, we want this revival to become a reality in your local assemblies. Because the fire is set already. Amen. Jesus called the disciples in Matthew 10. And he sent them. And I love the way he put it. He just mentioned their names and told them that. As you go, heal the sick. As simple as that. And then preach the gospel. And then cast out out devils. Where are the disciples of Jesus Christ today? Where is Peter? Where is John? Where is James? You are the Elijah of the time. You are the John of the time. You are the Peter of the time. And therefore, power has been vested in you. And you need not be afraid. There was something evangelists mentioned this morning, which is actually killing almost every, every believer here. That when you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit asking you to act, then you begin to ask yourself questions. What about if I speak and nothing happens? But when you speak, something will happen. And so, go with this message and the unction. Now, if we work on it and work at it, then you will begin to brighten. People will begin to see that something has happened after the crusade. And those who will be obedient to the Lord will see his glory. We thank God for what he has done. And we thank him for what he is still doing. And we thank him for what he is going to do. And I pray 
But as you have spent all your time, your strength, contributed something to support this good cause, may the good Lord replenish your food in the name of Jesus. Go in perfect peace. Evangelist Amos Jimmy Marken. <laughs> A real man of God with God's anointing. God gives the anointing without measure. And my prayer for you is that a certain somebody will say, you have not seen anything yet. God has not finished with you. Nothing has even happened. And I pray that the Lord will use you tremendously across nations. May the Lord bless you. And may you be filled with his anointing. Evangelist Mike Harris, you preach a very powerful message. There was a Catholic priest who always used John 3.16. And people felt they were being bored. After seven years, he went on a fellow, spent six months, came back, and they were expecting this time that the test will be from First Peter or James. He came. The place was full. They said, God has given me a message. And everybody took pen and paper. And I'm preaching from the gospel according to St. John chapter 3, verse 16. But I tell you, that is the foundation. And so that word, as soon as you quoted that, then I said something will happen. God has demonstrated his love through Christ. And that is what you heard and given. I pray that wherever you stand, the Lord will give you the unction you need to minister. May you be empowered. Amen. I want us to be on our feet and shout our team three times. And this time I want you to be focused. Don't just shout in the name of Jesus in the air. I want you to be focused. I mean, target something. Are you ready? Are you ready? Because this is what you are going to do in your families, in your place of work, in the church. When you come to a crossroad, this is what you are going to say. You say it once and something happens. So I want you to be focused. And when I do like this, the first one, then you shout in the name of Jesus and whatever you focus on will be done. Amen. God bless you all. I humbly invite Prophet Apiedu to pray and uh, say the benediction. Wherever you are, stand still until you hear the last amen and then you go with it. It makes the wounded spirit whole and calm the trouble rest this man to the end and to the world rest the
just my shepherd, my savior, my friend, my prophet, priest, and king. Try up. 